Hey guys, it's Kevin in my review for the laundromat. And what the laundromat is essentially about is we follow a large assortment of characters who all have very much been affected by this uh, insurance fraud that's going on. But we also follow these two law partners who are trying to exploit the financial system, give us a better idea of how it works, but also how they are not complicit at all, even though they are very obviously are, and they're trying to kind of walk back how that is the case. And basically the rest of the film is showing how the system kind of works, but also how it has affected these various individuals and that's really all I'm going to say. So the laundromat overall, I was very interested in this film uh, from the looks of the trailers and things like that, especially with Steven Soderbergh being at the helm. This seemed like it was going to be a return to form from it. It seemed like it was going to be kind of like a fun heist film. All these people are going to team up together to like expose this one uh, community of people. I thought that's kind of what this was going to be. You had a really great cast here. I mean, Meryl Streep, Gary Oldman, Antonio Banderas, Jeffrey Wright. I mean, so many talented actors in this movie. I really thought this could have been something great. Steven Soderbergh has been doing some really great stuff lately. I know he had another Netflix film that came out this year that I still have yet to review because I honestly need to rewatch it. Um, but once I do, I will... Um get a review out for that one, um, but because of him being on such a streak lately with things like Unsane and things like that, but also this being the first film he's done in a while that is not shot on an iPhone, I was really interested in seeing how this could turn out, and it honestly kind of sucks. Uh, the Laundromat is one of the most lifeless and disjointed films that I think I have seen all year. There is really not a lot to this that really does work out, and it's unfortunately another huge misfire from Netflix that really did uh, disappoint me quite a bit, and we're just getting to right now, starting off with the cast... And I'll just say this right now, there's a lot that really does hurt this film, but the cast for the most part isn't one of them. Uh, Meryl Streep, let's talk about her. She is a high caliber actress, you know, you see her in, in movies every single year, you expect that she's going to be nominated. She is fine here. Um, I don't think this is that great of a performance from her. She is pretty one note overall. I mean, she does an alright job with what she has, but... This is not the Oscar-caliber Meryl Streep that we've come to, to um, you know, to expect here. And maybe it's because she's coming off the heels of, like, such an amazing performance in Big Little Lies that, like, I was expecting more from her here. But this is just a really average performance. There's not a lot that she did here that really did impress me all that much. I mean, her character herself, um, you know, of Ellen, you can see how she has been affected by, like, this financial crisis and things like that. But I really didn't think Streep did anything that great with the role. Um, I just thought that she was kind of fine here, and that is shocking for someone of Streep's caliber, but I just thought she was kind of fine. Like, there's, there's, I didn't think that she was bad necessarily, but she just didn't do a whole lot for me here, unfortunately. The two performances, though, that really do stick out in this film and really do keep it from being utterly boring is Gary Oldman and Antonio Banderas. These two are just electric here. They work so well in this film. They're so fun and energetic and really just have this energy to them that nobody else in the film really does have. And they're just really giving it their all here. Being so charismatic in the sense that they are trying to sort of mislead you. You see how presentable and just how fun these guys are. You forget about all of the dastardly stuff that they've really done and all of the shit that they have done, you know, all the ways that they fucked other people over. And they do a really great job here for sure. I thought they were very very entertaining throughout the film. They do narrate it, and they're definitely the best thing about it. If there's any reason to watch this movie, it's just to see their performances, because I do think they are overall a lot of fun here for sure. Definitely the best thing about the film. Everyone else in the film, similar to Streep, they're not bad, but they're just really fine. And there are many actors here, but they're all very unremarkable. Jeffrey Wright, uh, David Schwimmer, Sharon Stone, Matthias Schoenart, uh, Will Forte, Chris Parnell, James Cromwell. All of these actors are giving very unremarkable performances. And I'm sorry, but when you are working with the kind of talent that you are here, I expect a lot more than that. I expect them to give a lot more effort than that that, but here, a lot of them just didn't really seem like they were that into this film, and a lot of them might be due to, you know, the quality of the film overall, but I really did think the performances were going to, you know, elevate it, and that's really only the case for Oldman and Banderas. Everyone else just kind of seems like they're sleepwalking throughout this, which was very disappointing for sure. But now let's get to the directing and the writing here, which is easily 
easily the worst thing about this film. And look, Steven Soderbergh is a director I very much do admire. He is usually very selective with the kind of projects that he takes on, which is why it is so shocking that he would direct a film like this. Because to be honest with you, there is no flair here. I have no idea why he decided to take part in this film. Nothing about this feels like a project that Soderbergh would take on. There's definitely traces of it for sure, where you can tell he's trying to add some of his, you know, specific sort of shtick to it, but it really didn't work here at all. It, most of the movie is very tonally inconsistent. The only time I felt Soderbergh are in those scenes with Oldman and Banderas, but any everyone else, I really did not feel that here. And again, I don't know why he took this on. To me, it seemed like this was something where there was a project that an individual wanted to do, and they knew that it wasn't that great of a script. They wanted to pitch it to Netflix, because obviously it's a Netflix original, you know, it's a Netflix original film, so they pitched it to them, and the only way that they would agree to it is if, you know, um, is if Steven Soderbergh was involved, that they had someone recognizable for them to market, because honestly, if Steven Soderbergh was not behind this movie, I don't think many people would watch it, because I need you guys to know, this is not really a narrative film. What this is, essentially, is basically an informative video video about uh, shady, you know, businesses, business corporations. That's really what this is all about. It's not really a narrative film in that way. It attempts to be one, but it really isn't one at all. And again, Soderbergh's directing doesn't really do much to elevate, similar to the acting here. The writing is just a giant mess altogether. What the film really is trying to be is, again, it's trying to show how, like, this specific business has affected all of these people, but the problem is the way the writing is done, it really doesn't work as a narrative film. We get a introduction to Meryl Streep's character. You think she's really going to be like the main character here, the person that anchors it all. You see how they have really affected her as a character, and um, you know, because she, she's on this dream vacation, everything seems to be going great for her, but then tragedy strikes, and again, you realize that all of these shady dealings is connected to this law firm, and you're thinking, okay, so now we're going to try to follow her, trying to take them down, trying to see, you know, all the conspiracies and things like that of what they've really been doing. But very quickly, we veer away from Ellen. After the first 45 minutes, the film is no longer about her. We've sent her on this random, like, Nigerian family that I just didn't give a shit about, where this father's being, like, unfaithful to, like, his wife, and basically, um, you know, because of that, you know, it's having an effect on, like, their daughter or something like that. I, I don't really know. I don't know why this had any relevance in the film, and that's one of my biggest issues, that a lot of this film very much reminded me of life itself from last year. It's not nearly on that level of terrible. In fact, I don't think this is a terrible movie or anything like that. It's close to one, but I don't think it is a terrible film. Um, it remind me in the sense where it just feels very unfocused, and I think this film would have been a lot better if it would have been presented as basically vignettes, if we could have had Banderas and Oldman come in and kind of change up the story, and it tries to be that at some points. There are points where they will come in, and then we'll talk about how, okay, we're going to the next story now. But it doesn't really feel the way because then we will cut back to Ellen or we'll cut back to, say, David Schwimmer's character. This other guy who is involved with what's going on, his story doesn't really go anywhere either. And that's the thing. None of these stories go really anywhere that exciting. They don't really go anywhere that interesting. And just overall didn't really work as a narrative film. And I think its biggest issue is not the fact that it wasn't told as vignettes. Because like I said, I think that would have benefited the film. I I think its biggest issue is the fact that it is a narrative film. I really do think this film would work a lot better if it was a documentary. I really do, because it's very factual. Uh, a lot of the film is Oldman and Banderas narrating things to you, trying to explain to you how certain businesses work and things like that. And that stuff is very interesting when you get to see, you know, um, them explaining the way things are done, but also how shady they really are. Kind of reminded me of the film Fire Fraud that came out earlier this year, where you have this guy who is very clearly responsible for all of the damage that has taken place at this festival, 
but yet he doesn't fess up to any of it. He tries to blame other people. That's similar to what Oldman and Banderas' characters are doing in this. They're just placing the blame on others. There's so many instances in this film where they say, oh, we're not responsible for this. We had nothing to do with this. And because of that, while it is interesting, you still don't really know if it is entirely factual, what they're all saying and things like that. So I just feel like as a documentary, it would be far more interesting. It also would be far more reliable in that sense. Like if people want to know what's going on, I just think a documentary will be able to get this stuff done a lot better because as a story, it really does fall flat, I have to say. None of these stories were particularly interesting at all, and I'm just very surprised that they turned this into a narrative film because it really didn't seem like they knew where to go with this story wise especially towards the end it really does pitter out after a while and I, I don't really know what was going on with the screenplay here and I can't I'm very surprised that it's not a great screenplay because Scott Z Burns I mean this is the guy who's given us like the born ultimatum he's given us a side effects a really great film from 2013 that I enjoyed um you know he he gave us dawn of the Planet of the apes he's gonna be doing no time to die he's gonna be doing the report later this year, so I don't know how this turned out in the way it did. I, I don't know why this is such a messy screenplay in that way. I really don't know what ended up happening here, and uh, again, I just think it boils down to the fact that this just should not have been a narrative film. Um, I will say, though, cinematography-wise, it looks great. It's definitely really, there's some really great shots here for sure. I think uh, definitely aesthetically, it does feel like a Soderbergh film in that way. And that's one of the best things about it, is that the film always looks really good. There's never a shot that looks unnatural or something like that. Like, it, it does look really good cinematography-wise. The score here, I also really enjoyed. I think the score was very entertaining and definitely one of the best things about the movie. And the editing, like I said, this film is so choppy edited. There are so many scenes that just feel very redundant and just go on and on. There's one scene involving Matthias Schoenarts that I did not think was going to end. This scene just dragged on and on and again really amounted to much of nothing. Even though again, Oldman and Banderas' characters try to make it seem like it is tying into it. And that's the other thing. Like As much as I did enjoy them, they often will use them as a crutch to try to get them to prove their the certain scenes relevance in the film and it really does fall flat i should also mention this film is incredibly patronizing especially towards the end which is easily one of the most baffling things i think i've ever seen i have no idea who approved this ending who thought that this ending would be a good idea to end this film on but it is truly horrible and the film itself isn't terrible but this is easily maybe one of the worst endings of the entire year um it's honestly, it, it left me absolutely speechless. I had to, I had to uh, actually like rewind it like about a solid three or four times just to see if what I just, just to see what it was really trying to do, see if it actually was trying to do something meaningful. But really, it just felt like they had no idea how to end the movie. They thought that this would be an interesting, you know, they thought at the last minute this would be a cool idea, and it really wasn't at all. It is incredibly unsatisfying, and I really don't know what they were thinking. Ultimately, The Laundromat is a film that I think could have been really interesting. I think this could have been a film that really does dive deep into the problems with, you know, businesses and the problems with this corporation overall but unfortunately it just after a while amounts to a film that really doesn't know what it wants to be it gets very redundant it has characters that you don't care about it does have two really fun performances from Banderas and Oldman but ultimately it feels like a film that I think would have been a lot better if it was not a narrative film I really do think that it would have been a lot better if this was more of an, in, in, you know, for, in, uh, more of a informative documentary, I think you could have covered the same ground, and I just think overall would have been a far more meaningful experience than what we got here. It's easily one of the most disappointing films of the entire year. It's unfortunately the kind of film I would expect for Netflix to do at this point, and I am going to give The Laundromat overall a C minus. Either way, that's it for this review. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you guys in my next video, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.